Uh, how good is Vision Sunday? Let's pray. Father, I believe you've given me a word and I pray that you would give the church a word. Father, it's okay if I believe it's from you. That's nice. But Father, I want people to receive a word from you today. I want people to hear your word. Father, that faith is built, that something is stirred in the heart of the hearer. Help me to communicate what you want to say and your heart to emerge church in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's a new year and it's a new day. But what does it mean where everywhere you go and see it's a new day? I think it's up on the, uh, on, on the screen. It's like it's a new day. It's what we've called the message last year at the end of the year. I gave everyone a little frame that said all the things and it said, it's a new day. So what does it actually mean? And I remembered a story that I read as a little kid. I reckon I was in grade two or so. And the story just fascinated me. And, and what would happen when I was a kid, I'd, I'd just read the same book again and again if I liked that particular book. I read I Am David about 20 times. I just loved that book. Who remembers that book, I Am David? Anyone else have to read that at school? I thought it was awesome, right? But uh, this book was about a, uh, a king, and it was, it, was a, it was a child's book. It wasn't like a, a best-selling novel. But uh, this king sent his servants and a, and a servant on a quest because what happened is the king was really bored with life and his, the ho-hum and the humdrum of life, and he'd seen everything before. There was nothing exciting in his life anymore. So he set a quest to one of his servants. One of the servants got the short end of the deal and, and he said, you need to find me something and show me something that no one else has ever seen. No other eye has ever seen this thing. So he goes, well, that's an impossible task. How can I do that? That's a, that's a terrible task. I'm not excited at all about that task. How am I going to do it? Certainly someone's seen the thing that I'm going to bring to the king. And, and he goes, I'm going to have seen it myself. How do I bring something that I haven't even seen myself to the king so he can see it for the first time? And so he's kind of like thinking and racking his brain. He knows he's going to get in terrible trouble if he doesn't do what the king has asked. And all of a sudden he gets an idea. And that feeling of being terrified leaves him. That, that sense of perfection just goes. And, uh, and he goes, I know what I'm going to do. So one day he returned to the king with his item. The king was excited. I'm going to see something that, 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 that no one's ever seen, that no eye has ever seen. He goes, this is fantastic. And so the servant handed the king an egg. And the king's like, what are you talking about? Everyone's seen an egg. It's a common thing. Eggs are everywhere. What are you? That's a, a silly. Everyone has seen the egg. But all of a sudden, the egg just started to crack and move. And out of it popped a, a little furry-headed chick. And they never and anyone had seen that little chick before. The king had seen an egg before, but he'd never seen the life in the egg. And that's what I mean when I say it's a new day. Not that we turn everything upside down, not that we change everything, but know that we would start to see life again in some of the things that we have taken for granted. The word that God gave me for 2018 is Luke 1, 2 verses 78 79. A new day. Everyone say, a new day. A new day will dawn upon us because our God is loving and merciful. He will give light to those who live in the dark and death's shadow. He will guide us in the way of peace. You know, it's a, it's a new day. Now, that verse is not in the Bible, so I shouldn't even call it a verse. That saying is not in the Bible. I was shocked when I found that out because I just thought it was. And I would never have actually given you a frame that just had a saying in it if I knew it wasn't from the Bible. I promise you, it wouldn't have happened. And so when I was looking for it's a new day in the Bible, I realized it wasn't there. And I, I, I looked and, and prayed, and, and this is the verse that God gave me. Now, if you think about it, it's a new day. It's a new day. Well, Nina and I have been pastoring a merged church for seven years now. So it's not actually a new day. If we don't know kind of what's going on at a merged church, there's something wrong. Everything's along the same line. So what does 
a new day mean? And this is what I, I feel. But that sense that God is doing something new has been brewing in my spirit ever since the middle of last year when I knew that that seven-year kind of uh, mark was, was coming up. It's actually why we did our 21 days of prayer and fasting, as you remember, we did that last June. And really what it was is I felt God say, one wave had finished, but a new wave was going to start. And what I felt God show me was, is that a wave doesn't start where the old one finished, but you've got to go back to where the waves start. You've got to swim back against the old waves, uh, the other things, and you've got to find that clear place again so that you can catch the next wave. Going back to, the, to that place to catch the waves takes work, takes effort, takes some, takes some trouble to get there, but it's worth it in the long run when you're ready to catch the new wave. And so for 21 days, we prayed and fasted. For all waves of God start in hunger. All waves of God start in the seeking of God. Right? Nothing comes from the seeking of man, man's ways, man's strategies, new things that men are doing around and other churches are doing. New waves start in heaven when we seek the face of God. And for 21 days, we sought his face. And I believe that God said, one wave is finished, a new wave has started. And so I believe that that wave actually began at our summit last year. There was a new sense of faith in the place. The worship at the summer, the level of engagement at the summer, the maturity that was displayed by so many people led me to believe that the new wave has begun. Isaiah 43, 19 says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Right now as a church, we are in the do you not perceive it realm. We are in the, it's in the spirit realm, not the natural realm yet. Before something can happen in the natural, it first happens in the supernatural. Before something happens on earth, it first happens in heaven. It, it's something that, that is invisible right now, but one day will become visible. It's in the perception. I have to perceive that something's going on. If I were coming to your house and you knew that I was going to be there at 7 o'clock, if you heard a car drive up to your house, if you heard the, the door open and then close again and start to hear footsteps down your driveway, you know that I'm there. You know that I'm coming. I might not be at your house yet. We're not sitting down talking. We're not having any dinner. We're not doing anything yet. But you perceive that I'm here. I'm not there yet, but you perceive that I'm there. That's what's happening in the Spirit right now. We have yet to see, we have yet to engage the fullness of the new wave, but we can start to perceive it, we can start to see it, we can start to hear that that wave is certainly coming. Do you not perceive it? Do you not perceive it? And that's what I'm asking you to do as a congregation. Over these next months, I want you to start to perceive it. See, that one wave lasted for seven years. Now, I'm not saying the next wave is going to go seven years. God can do it how he wants to do it. But if it's a seven-year wave, a few months is nothing in comparison. So over these next few months and weeks, you're going to start to see the signs. You're going to start to smell the smells. You're going to start to perceive that God is doing something new at Emerge Church. So I'm asking you, perceive. Let your spiritual eyes and ears be open. Don't just see it when it happens. See it as it's cooking, so to speak. You know, this is a new day. We are now a merged church in every way. We came together last year as a merged church in number, but legally and in all the other ways, we were still two separate churches. But right now, we have all come together in every single way. One church in two locations. We are no longer Albany Hills Christian Church. We are no longer Recalibrate Church or Redcliffe AOG. We cannot take the old into the new. 
Julie said it so well to me the other day. She goes, if we just keep doing what we were doing, we are just doing old things, there's nothing new about it. She said, she goes, it's got to see it now as if we were starting a merged church now, what would we do? How would we do things? Is there a new mindset, a new mindset of being one, even though we are in many locations and at many services? And if you can understand that, because it's something you've got to catch rather than understand. If you can get that in your spirit, you're actually a long way down the road to perceiving what it is that God is leading us into. The preceding verse of verse 19 is verse 18. It says, remember not the former things. Don't consider the old. We are now a merged church. The preceding seven years that Nina and I pastored got us to now, but will not carry us into our destiny. See, I want us to be proud of our church, Emerge Church. Our church is about to emerge. And as participators, very important word, as participators of Emerge Church, we need to be able to communicate a pride in being part of Emerge Church without becoming proud ourselves. We need to help people, and, and, and as a congregation, you need to catch that God is doing something here and creating an identity for the church. Pastor Danny, when he was here, spoke such a great message of how Peter knew and saw who God was. And one of the great things of Emerged Church is that we understand the importance of Jesus. We certainly understand that. We are not a religious church. We are not here about just doing things for God. All of us have a love relationship with Jesus. You know, Jonathan's communion today, saying everything is built and predicated on the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord. We know who God is. We identify who God is. But now God is going to give us our identity. He's going to tell us who we are. He's going to give us an identity that we completely engage in so that we see the church, we see a merged church as God's plan for our lives rather than just the place we go to church. We happily jump in because we see and sense that it's at a merged church, our destiny and the kingdom of God collide. I, I, and the, the, the church doesn't just become the meter of your needs. It becomes the place where you encounter God and His plan for your life. We become part of the collective versus just a group of individuals that come to church to get our needs met. Right now, to be honest, we are going through a pruning process. Selena has moved off staff. And that's different around the office, right? But she's been ably replaced by Jason, who's doing a fantastic job. A bit louder than Selena, right? You know, a bit of a, he's a boy versus a girl, but he's doing very, very well, right? And, and, and uh, today, I'm going to tell you some news that, though I understand and I'm at peace with it, in my heart, it doesn't fill me with joy. See, that's the thing. When a tree is pruned, it doesn't look good. If you have a vine that's full of leaves and, and branches, and then all of a sudden you just chop it all off, and it's kind of just like one branch with a few knobs on it, it's like, what have we done? That's not good for the tree. That doesn't look good at all. And so sometimes the things that we see as negative are actually positive. See, Jesus said that he's going to prune us at uh, emerge church and you think well that can't be good but Jesus said no take it as a compliment because he bears a tree so it can produce more fruit and what tree does he uh, prune he prunes a fruitful tree emerge church has been fruitful but God has more fruit for us so I actually take it as a compliment so what is my announcement after I've said all that I'll just take a quick drink of water and I'm going to just read it because I can't look because then I will cry. All right. 
So what is my announcement? Ah. Pastor Jonathan and his wife Joe are moving back to Adelaide in March. They're going to leave a big hole, but they're going for the best of reasons. You know, Pastor Jonathan, Joe, Nina and I have been talking over this for the last 15 months with uh, different challenges in Joe's health, the age of the children and, and some other considerations. Pastor Jonathan and Joe felt God's prompting to move and I have to, even though I don't really want to, I have to assent that God is actually moving. Pastor Jonathan and Joe have completed their assignment here and we as a church are actually ready to move forward without them. One of the reasons that God prunes a fruitful tree is that so the other branches and shoots will grow in his place. Now obviously this is not something that Jonathan walked into my office with this week. You know, we've been talking about it really for 15 months. And so I've been a little bit concerned. What are we going to do? And then we had all the hullabaloo with Neil and Julie's visa. And how is it good to see them sitting on the front row, Neil back there. Come on, that's awesome. That's fantastic. And, uh, and, and I was kind of like worried. And on one Sunday night, we uh, had three of our younger people preaching on that night. And at the end of the meeting, I said, I want everyone who is between 18 and 30 to come up on the stage and we're going to pray for you. And so I looked up on the stage and we had over 150 people between 18 and 30. And God just spoke to my spirit and he goes, what are you worried about? Look how many branches and shoots are starting to grow. And so I don't really have to worry about the future, even though I don't like some of the decisions. Another piece came to my heart because when we were talking about it last year, was Pastor Corey Turner came to our church. And he's going to be here in a couple of weeks' time. But at the night meeting, I don't know if you remember this, at the night meeting, and I showed it at our leaders' meeting, but we just haven't got time to do that today. But uh, he prophesied over Neil and Julie. Now, remember, at that time, he didn't know who Neil and Julie was. He didn't even know if they were a couple. He asked, you are a couple, are you? Right? So, So he hadn't spoken to them. He didn't know that they had come from England. He didn't know that they were serving under uh, James and Nikki and that James and Nikki had gone back to England and that they were now with us, right? Uh, and they had nothing, they had no idea. So he prophesies and says things like, you know, God, like if Ruth has brought you from a land, God has made a place for you here. And it was just an incredible prophecy. He basically prophesied them into the life and into the leadership of a merged church. At the same time, God had given him another word, but he didn't do this word publicly. And when I tell you what it was, you understand why and, uh, and why he's a brave prophet because essentially in the meeting afterwards, he said, Pastor Jonathan, I want to speak to you. And he asked me to come in the office and he goes, I've got a word for you. And he said, you are in transition from this house. As bold as that. Imagine saying that in front of me, right? What? That's not of God. False prophet, where's the stones? I'm going to stone you, right? I didn't like it. I didn't want to hear that. But when something's of God, you've got to listen to it. What I didn't know is that was the very word that brought peace to Jonathan's heart because he's thinking to myself, how can I leave? I don't really want to go different things. They're not reason enough. You've got to go because God is saying, not because of a circumstance, not because of this. A faith man doesn't just move out of circumstance. And what had happened is it released him to be able to know that God was in him moving. So essentially on that night, Pastor Corey prophesied Neil and Julie into our leadership and Jonathan out of our leadership. And so it was a half good prophecy, right? <laughs> You know, Pastor Jonathan has been crucial, absolutely crucial in getting the church from what it was to a multi-site, multi-service church that we are now. You know, at our staff level, he's trained our staff with great love and skill. At board level, he's implemented vision with faith every time. At church level, he has made sure that we have the standards and the facilities to build God's kingdom. 
at event level, he has helped us hold quality events that any church would be proud to host. You know, at our missions level, our Cambodia trips have been impacting effective and envy of the churches twice our size, and he's seen the mission giving rise uh, as he has led that area. Even in the last month, he's made sure that the Redcliffe building has been refurbished and implemented a budget regime that will keep the church financially on track for many years to come. Even this week, he sat down with Jason, who's our newest staff member, and said, this is how you've got to deal with Mark. Right, because I'm a complicated character, apparently. Right, so uh, right, no, he didn't say that. Right, but uh, but but you know, just help Jason understand me, because I or I don't actually think linearly. I think all over the place. Right, and so he helped him understand. See, it's hard for me. Jonathan and Joe have been part of Nina and I lives for 12 years in ministry. Many of you don't know, but when I was pastoring the city campus uh, for Paradise Community Church, Jonathan was my associate there as well. And so we've done life together. I think something, he just does it. He just understands. He just understands me. And so it's going to be very difficult for us, but it's in God's will. You know, Jonathan and Joe, once some things have been worked out with the church there in Adelaide that they're going to, will be pretty much doing the same things that they established here. They're going to a, a growing church, uh, a church that isn't the size of what we are, but they've just bought a building, and, and the pastor there just needs a Jonathan. He needs his Jonathan to come and see things happen. So his last Sunday is going to be March the 11th, and we'll get his whole family up then. We'll pray for them. You have many opportunities. We're not going to do that today because he's not leaving yet. We'll do that on his last Sunday, right? And on March the 11th will be his last Sunday, and it will be a great time. Jonathan, why don't you come up and tell us a little bit of your story? Uh, that'll be good. Come on, let's give him a hand. Come on, yeah, come on. Go. Yeah, it, it, it's been a real journey uh, for us, um, for our family. Uh, coming here about six years ago now, um, it's, it's been amazing, um, just the journey that God's had us on. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's been lots of talk, as Pastor Mark said, it's really been, uh, what, over a year since we started talking with Pastor Mark and Ian about our future and what that meant and what that looked like. Uh, many of you might be aware that Joe uh, has been diagnosed with MS, and, uh, but that, that was really within, like, the first year that we were here. So, so, so whilst um, living in Queensland can be... Hard at times, we have a condition like MS because of the weather and things like that. It, we've never wanted to be dictated to by outside circumstance. We've never wanted to live lives that we, we live inward. We live from what God has done from us on the inside, not from circumstances on the outside. And that's how we've always run our families, how we've always decided to live. And so, and so whilst it, it was part of the consideration, it was never a determining factor because yeah. if it was, we, we would have gone four or five years ago, but that's we right. didn't, you know, so... Um, and then, uh, but, but we felt a change. We felt something was different. We felt like uh, things were changing for us in, in what we were doing. And then, uh, and then really, as Pastor Mark said, it was really uh, sort of wrestling with all that. It was Corey Turner, again, around this time last year, who came, really gave that word. And, and it was very releasing uh, for me because I, I, I love the Merge Church. I'm passionate about what God is doing here and, and I'm passionate about uh, the people here and, and, and what's happening. Um, you know, we are, we're in a place now where we are, you know, you hear Pastor Mark say, uh, we're happy scared, you know, we're, we're, we're happy because we feel like God's uh, moving us forward into a new chapter and that's exciting for us, but we're freaking out at the same time because what we have is great and it's safe and it's comfortable and we, we love it and we know it so well, but, uh, but, but we're in that sort of place where where God is calling us to, uh, to step out. You know, I was sharing with someone before, just saying how, you know, all those times I was on a platform telling people to take steps of faith and trust God and believe God. Well, now I'm doing it. So um, <laughs> <laughs> preaching to myself all those years. Um, you know, and, and it's going to be a real joy for us in this next stage for our lives to be able to see what God does at Emerge Church, to see what God does through uh, the congregation and, and, through the, and through the church. And it really has been... Um, a privilege 
uh, to be part of the story of, of a merged church, to be part of uh, what God is doing uh, in, in this house. Um, I, um, we, we, we love what we do. We, we love building the house of God. We love... Uh, we love building the house. We love church. We love being involved. We love doing that. I love doing that physically. I love doing that structurally, spiritually. But I think ultimately the great joy for us in this journey has just been the stories of people along the way. It's, it's been the stories that, and being able to share lives uh, with all you guys here uh, in different ways along, along the journey and hearing your stories. You know, on, on Wednesday night at our leaders meeting, I was just chatting with Lance, wherever Lance is over here. And he was just telling me some of his story. Let me tell you, we need to make a movie about some of the things that are <laughs> gone. It's just, it's, I, but I love, that's, that's what I love. The, the church is about the people and it's about people loving and serving God with all their heart. And that's what I love building into. Um, I, I love, you know, being able to share lives. I, I really want to take this time as well um, to honour Lee and Mike Bischoff, um, who have been just amazing for us since we moved here and their whole family and Jezza back there as well, and just the, the Bischoff crew have just been amazing in just loving us and really have been a part of our family, away from family. So I just want to especially thank you. All different ones. I want to thank just the staff and the team here. Pastor Mark and Nina have just been amazing on just this whole journey along through all this. Uh, all, all the team. Um, uh, Neil and Julie has been fantastic. Joe, wherever he is somewhere. And uh, it's just been great. I really love serving with you, Joe, working alongside of you. It's been such a joy and an honour to, to serve with you. Just the, the whole team here. Jenny in the finance. Yeah. Jenny, you just do an amazing job. It's such a great team here just serving God. And we're just really excited for the future. We're really excited for what God is doing. Really, it's so true Pastor Mark is saying. There is a pruning that is happening and we're sad to be part of that pruning but we can see the growth. We can see what God is going to do. We can see the potential for the future that is a merged church. And we are just excited. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to come back at some stage, I'm sure, <laughs> and be able to do all that and just continue journey with you. But at the end of the day, um, we, we really just want to thank you for opening your lives, for sharing your hearts with us, for bringing us on the journey with you in uh, what God is doing in your lives because that's really what we're about and excited about. So, um, that's yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, God is pruning us, but it's so we can produce more fruit. New leaders, new pastors. New people are going to be rising up again and again. New worship leaders, new meeting hosts. There's always going to be more projects than money because God is setting us up to take the next wave. Are you ready? Are you ready to take the wave that God is going to bring us? See, pruning always looks bad, but it's actually healthy for the tree. And then I saw that there's a principle in Scripture that I actually hadn't seen before, but I just noted just of recent days. God commanded in the Old Testament that the Israelites keep the land fallow every seven years. So every seven years they had a year where they didn't work the land, and that was so the land could continue to produce. He said, I want you to work for six days, but on the seventh day you have a rest. So what he was saying is he goes, work really hard, but then have a rest so you can create again. God is pruning and doing things at a merged church because we've had a measure of fruit and he's saying we're just going to pare it back for a while so that you can produce more fruit. One area of pruning that we're going to go back to, and this is my second big announcement of the day, is that we are going to go back to one morning service at Warner. So we'll have a 9 a.m. service at Redcliffe and a 10 a.m. service at Warner. I felt at Warner in the mornings we've lost a sense of community and I want us to return to it. See, I never want church to be a meeting of individuals. It has to be 
as if we're ever going to reach our destiny. We have to do it together. We have to be a community together. It cannot be just individual people kind of caring less about the people across the aisle behind them and whatever because I'm getting my needs. We are one. We are together. And for us to reach out, that's why it's such a powerful statement that we're all here today. You know, over the last couple of months, I've heard of people being left out. I've heard of people not being loved. I've heard of people not feeling welcomed. I've heard of people being alone in our crowd. And I want to tell you, as a pastor, that just breaks my heart. So for a time, until it becomes completely impractical, we're going to go down to one service at Warner at 10 a.m. so that people have the time to sit with one another, get to know one another, and encourage one another. We haven't been good at what I would call a cross-the-aisle connection. And I want that to improve. And so as our merge gets bigger, we're going to actually have to make sure that that across-the-aisle connection is very strong. You know, we as a staff are talking uh, many new ideas and new ways of doing things so that we engender and that we create an atmosphere and environment where it's easy to do. And we're not just forcing you to get out of your uncomfortability, but we're going to make it easier for you to meet one another and do life with one another. As I say, if you've got any good ideas, we're open to them. Come and speak to one of our staff. One of the areas that we really want to see happen this year is the area of our life groups. And if you're a life group leader in this place, I want you to stand up right now. Whether youth, young adults, seniors, main church, whatever, if you're a life group leader, I want you to stand up right now. Fantastic. Come on, let's give these guys a hand. Stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. Come on, Val. <laughs> so, uh, see, life groups are where you can connect with one another, where you can rise up in the giftings that God has put in your life, that you can start to care and have different needs. All sorts of things can happen in life groups. And our church is going to get too big for you just to kind of have Sunday as a point of connection. It's got to be in smaller groups. And so we're going to believe that there's going to be an increase of life groups. Outside, as you leave today, there's a kind of a, a, an area there, and you'll be able to see a life group where it is near you. So we've got different age and different stage life groups. We've got different demographic. We've got different kind of geographic life groups. So there's something for you. So please make sure that you're part of it. Sign up at the end of today and one of our great life group leaders will come by you and meet, meet you and, uh, and you'll be part of the group. Let's just pray for them right now. Father, I thank you that much of our pastoral care will go through these people, God. Father, these men and women who have said that they, they're going to help, they're going to come alongside, they're going to pray for, they're going to teach, disciple and love, Father. They're going to meet people's needs, oh God. And Father, I pray, oh Lord, that whatever you get through them, get to them, oh God. Father, let us see it as part of your destiny to use them mightily to help others. Father, let life group become a great place of connection and friendship. We just ask that in Jesus' name. Anyone said? Amen. Amen. Fantastic. One of the things, Neil, where are you? Neil, come on up. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to have what was called a merge hub. So, Neil, I don't understand any of this. So, please show us what it means. Hey, thanks, Pastor Mark. Um, just do me a favor. If you've got a phone or some sort of internet-enabled device in your hand, just hold it up for me. Yeah, there's quite a few of you. I'll I hope, hope you're all uh, taking notes. They're on their Bible, any Pastor Facebook, Mark. Facebook, anything like that? Nah. That's it. On your device, you can op you open up your internet browser, whether that's Safari or whether that's Chrome, and you can go to emergechurch.life. This basically is um, a new initiative that we're starting right from today where you can gain access to everything that's going on in the life of Emerge Church. So whether that is uh, signing up for the Cambodia missions trip, 
whether that's finding out where a life group is near you, whether that's uh, finding out what's happening in kids' church, all the way through to how you can be involved in every single way, shape, and form, what's coming up in the calendar. All of those things will be available to you wherever you are, whenever you want to see it. So what we're trying uh, today is we're going to phase out the, the, the paper sign-up forms that just keep on getting missed, keep on going uh, AWOL whenever we need them. They're never there when we need them. You can sign up for everything, whether it's youth camp, young adults retreat, Cambodia missions trip. You can do everything via emergechurch.life. And you can do that today where you are in your seat or as you walk out through the doors, each person on a server team, life group, missions trip, or Emerge Life, they will all be able to sign you up and get you more information via the Emerge Hub. The simple pro premise is this, that wherever you are, you can be connected. Yeah. In a life group, you can be connected. It's not just a Sunday experience. When you go on a missions trip, you're connected. It's not just about being here in Australia. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you can be connected to the life of Emerge Church via emergechurch.life. So if you want to get that, you can just go to the website on your phone. It's very, very simple to find out. And if you have any questions, just ask Pastor Mark. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't do that if you're wise. Come on, let's give you a hand. You know, God is sending us a new day, not because we are any good, but because He is very good. God's love is actually shown, shown to us through the pruning in that He allows the pruning and, and loves us too much to let us remain the same. See, pruning always involves pain. I hate it that Jonathan's going, but growth always involves pain and uncomfortability. And God never promised us comfortability. He will give light, our, verse, our word says, to those who live in the dark and death shadow. The new way and the new day is going to be about salvation. I believe that God is going to set Emerge Church up as a place that He can send those who now live in darkness. People don't even know it yet, but they are living in death shadow. There are people going to hell. And we as a church need to understand that. And we have a message of salvation. We have a message of hope. And we have a message that would see someone move from darkness into light. And if we are not doing that, we are doing being a club. And so in the next move, the next wave has to be about seeing people find salvation. When we make church about anything else, we actually lose its effect. Jesus said, upon the rock of revelation of Christ, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. The church is built when the message of salvation is boldly preached and boldly proclaimed and that we are seeing salvations regularly. So I want to tell you that, that if we make it about this, if we make it about that, we soon lose our effectiveness. We soon lose our oomph. So this year, after every service, we will have an altar call. I don't care if I know everyone by name. I'm still going to put it out there so that we can see there are people who need to connect with Jesus. We are going to do an apologetics course with Mark Bromley so that you have in your hands the ability to be able to argue with some of the people and some of the evil arguments that are being presented today that make it look like if you're a Christian, you have no brain. Well, I want to tell you that God created our brain and that the science and God are not opposed, they're not enemies, and that God is smart. And we're going to do an apologetics course that's easy for you to understand, but will put in your hands the ability to speak with knowledge to people who are sprouting foolishness. You know, Yasmin Henry, we're going to do evangelism training. Yasmin Henry is going to have a seminar and hold a seminar that teaches us as Christians how to engage non-Christians, how to have a conversation without being spooky, without being some Bible basher, without being someone that, that turns people off, 
because that's what Yasmin did for years where she was on that boat going around nation to nation, just doing one and one evangelism, just engaging people in a conversation about their eternal life without being scary, without being spooky, without being rebuffed and rebutted. So uh, we're going to have that course that's going to go on. We're going to have an Easter and Christmas production where you can invite your friends and family and not be embarrassed. We're going to do our Cambodians missions trip to build upon what we've already built upon, right? And what we've already built. It's going to be end of June, early July. There's new schools and extra concerts. You give $5,000 to Youth Alive and we send Joe and the youth team into schools because salvation has to be central to all our prayers and all our endeavors. We are going to increase our missions focus. You know, missions focus has a great deal there in uh, Cambodia, but we have missionaries everywhere. And we want to make sure that you know about that and so that you can engage with that and that you're able to give to that over and above everything else that you do. See, Nikki Nisba is going to take over from Jonathan. Is Nikki here? She's probably with the kids. Where are you? Where's Nikki? She's, oh, no, she was, Nikki Nisbet's our kids pastor, but she's going to oversee missions. So uh, if you want to get involved in some work, talk to Nikki, and uh, we're going to see that area increase. One of the things that we're going to do, as I said, is we're actually going to bring light to where death's shadow is. I'm going to invite Wayne and Olya Czech, who are working in the uh, Ukraine. Come, you come up now. Come, come up, both of you. You're the best thing about him, right? No. (laughs) They're going to show you a video. And as you watch this video, you will see these are people who are bringing light right where there is their shadow. Cool. Come on, come on. We'll put the video on now. Сидим в подвалах, ну, раньше сидели, на данный момент это невозможно, потому что его затопило и прятаться сейчас негде. Это очень сложно. Сидишь каждый, каждый день и ожидаешь, что вот-вот и прилетит, ты можешь просто либо утром не проснуться, либо я не могу все. Я вот даже уже за шуму угодно могу рассказать, но это не могу. Когда начались боевые действия в нашем регионе, Люди оказались ну, как заложниками конфликта. Но на протяжении уже нескольких лет обстрелы не прекращаются. 11 месяцев у людей как нет электричества, нет воды, нет газа. И люди остаются вот под, под постоянными обстрелами, проживая в подвалах. И церковь называется «Добрая весть». Мы служим на линии фронта, и на самом деле линия фронта от нашего города 60-70 километров, а в 2014 году мы пережили войну прямо здесь. Поэтому во время время войны, когда начали взрываться снаряды в нашем городе, мы отреагировали тем, что начали эвакуировать людей. И э, на самом деле взрывали снаряды, это было опасно для жизни, Но люди в церкви настолько были воодушевлены послужить горожанам, что забирали свои машины, бусами, вывозили из из города, из зоны конфликта в другой город. После этого начался этап восстановления домов, потому что в городе было разрушено порядка полтора тысячи частных домов. то мы начали служить людям в других городах по линии фронта. И мы увидели, что принося хлеб и воду, это не меняет людей. И тогда родилась у нас идея об организации миссионерских команд. Начали там проводить собрания. 
приглашать людей в зал, ну, то есть было определенное уже место, ну, время, где мы договорились, то есть люди стали туда приходить. И сегодня там уже команда, которая трудится на постоянной основе. То есть там есть церковь, люди водный завет принимают, становятся членами церкви. За последние два года организовано 28 миссионерских команд вдоль всей линии фронта, вдоль всей фронт-лайн. Вы когда-нибудь слышали э, такое выражение «пастор-герой»? Пастор-герой? Да. Ну, может быть, кто-то так называет. Ну, слышали, конечно, что просто как. Ну, во-первых, я думаю, это тот, который ну, любит Бога и любит людей. Но, как бы, просто, наверное, делаем то, что должны делать. То есть, ну, настоящие христиане. Что побудило вас э, на протяжении всего этого вооруженного конфликта и войны оставаться здесь, на этом месте? Ну, так трудно сказать. Просто сегодня, оборачиваясь назад, можно одеть это в слова. А в тот момент а, просто реальная боль за боль людей, которые погибали здесь, заставляла вот просто приходить с риском для жизни, спасать. Как говорит Библия, что видя беду, то есть он не убегает и не оставляет ну, стану. Church, um, it's never fair when we show this video. You get to look at the subtitles and you hear the words, but they don't mean anything to you. We know these words; that's the language we speak. We know these voices, and we know these people. And so, I'm not even I'm not even watching the screen, and it just it just hits me every time. Um, I've been privileged to be supported by your church for. For many years now, it's been three years since the Sheck family has been in uh, uh, in Australia, and uh, it's uh, um, it's it's special to be here on on your Vision Sunday. Um, so it's for for many of you, it's the first time you've ever seen us, and um, we just want to say thank you for the work that that uh, for the investment in the prayers and the support that that you give us. Um, and now you've got some faces to go with with the names, maybe. Um, So Olya's uh, Ukrainian, and our four boys are, are, are Ukrainian. They've all been, they were all born in the same hospital. Uh, we've got 17-year-olds, uh, an eight-year-old, and a two-year-old, born in the same hospital, and it was the same doctor. And she was old when the first ones were born. <laughs> um, has nothing to do with Vision Sunday. Just want to break the ice a little bit. It always, uh, the video always um, it plays something uh, heavy on my heart. Uh, we're in a country that have been there for 24 years, sort of turned up just after the birth of, of the nation as it's become in, in recent history. And uh, we've seen amazing things uh, happen, uh, including two revolutions and now a war that, that continues to this day. So just to share a little bit about where Ukraine is, you can see there, uh, Ukraine is uh, actually the largest country in Europe that is totally enclosed within the European borders. And um, yeah, you, you can see it there. On the next slide, Uh, just to answer the questions, you know, how close are you to the fighting? Um, you can see the four little flags there. That's the work that Operation Mobilization does um, in, in different locations. Apart from in the war zone, uh, we're uh, situated about 700 kilometers away from where, uh, where the fighting is. Uh, you can see down the bottom there, Crimea has been annexed by uh, the Russian Federation. There is no fighting going on there. It's become a military fortress which is totally, uh, totally closed off. But in the Far East, Uh, is where the, the front line is. It's, it's not a DMZ, it's an MZ, and uh, every day we have dozens of ceasefire violations um, going over that line, and there are actually thousands and thousands of people that are, that are stuck there. Um, Ukraine has suffered so much over the last century, I'm not sure if there would be many other nations uh, or people groups that have suffered so much, and so when, uh, when war is going on around you, and you've just got three walls and half a roof left and you decide to stay, it says a lot about your, uh, what, what you think about hope and what you have faith in. They believe that no one is there to help them and that there is no future and this is all they have. So we're privileged to be involved with uh, Operation Mobilization. I'm the field leader in, in Ukraine and um, we're involved in some amazing ministries there which are catalytic ministries 
to the church and we're seeing amazing things. Those, some of those guys on that video, they're legends, uh, and living legends that we've been able to, to partner with and then uh, see things expand. Um, let's go to the next, uh, next slide. So um, our vision is uh, to see vibrant communities of Jesus followers amongst the least reached and um, I love it. Um, we've been in uh, our little town of uh, Kaharalik, which we say Kagalik, garlic with a ka on there, otherwise people can't, can't get it. It's not that we eat a lot of garlic, we eat more potatoes, but um, in that little place, there's never been a, a church that's been planted that's, that's vibrant enough to, uh, to impact the community around it. Um, and uh, we're, we've been um, embedded there for, for the last 20 years. And we, uh, we're, we're, we're not planning on leaving. We see that the job is just, uh, is just beginning. Um, so that's, uh, uh, it's, it's a special thing for us to be, call, uh, to be called there. And we're seeing uh, it's, a, it's a new day. Um, and in, uh, d despite the economic problems and despite the political problems and despite military conflict, we believe that the Ukrainian church is ready to engage mission uh, with that little resource uh, that they have and that really uh, that really fits in with me because my gifting is in innovation um, I'm a I'm an entrepreneurial type think, uh, thinker and uh, we're involved in not only co community development and engaging the local community with all of the myriad of problems that they have but we believe in sustainable missions we believe that there are resources available that can be used there so that the Christians can impact the community and finance the work um, and also disciple people through the, uh, through the work that, um, that, that they're doing. Let's go to the next slide. Um, just last year, uh, we put solar panels up, the first in our whole region, and uh, some of your support money that goes to us helped put uh, some panels up, and we're actually generating income, income locally, which I can tell you for, for us, that's a, that's a big relief. Um, and uh, uh, just to show you uh, one of the ideas that, uh, that we're doing, and uh, go to the next slide. And uh, one of the things we've been doing since 2014, when the, when the war began, um, we had been making biodiesel from McDonald's oil until that point, and I just knew that that whole project was gonna come to an end. And we started seeing the, all the, the waste plastics lying around, so we researched it, and uh, we now have made a machine that, that makes oil out of the, uh, it basically returns plastics back into the, uh, to the oil that it, that it came from. And the good thing about this, not only is it very active where the Christians can be involved in, in cleaning up the local environment, um, it puts your faith where your mouth is, uh, it projects faith into the community, and uh, not only that, but we see, we see a future, it's a two-sided it's a, it's a, it's a two thing. Um, there are many people that think about missions that they've got to become something that they're not. Oh, I've got to do evangelism, I've got to become a, a theologian. Um, or, or something like that, and yet we've now come across young engineering students. They love God, they love missions, they're engineers, that's how God created And so this summer we're having first uh, uh, university students coming, and they just can't wait to get their hands on, uh, on, on our machine to see that, that, that God has created you uniquely. And I want to speak that to you. Um, Ukraine is very different from, from Australia, but God has created you uniquely to do stuff for him in his name, representing uh, everything about who, about who God is. And um, we'd ask for your prayers um, because uh, we're just getting to the stage now where the, the commercial prototype is in its, uh, its testing and uh, teething and troubleshooting phase. Um, it will affect our local community. But secondly, um, we're, the, the future of this is we want we, the, the places that the gospel is spreading the fastest is in the places where they have the least resources, meaning the least money. And we believe that um, this can be a catalyst to help them clean up their environment, create local jobs, and be those evangelists and church planners that, uh, uh, that, are, that are needed there. But I'd add this last little thing. Ukraine is a country that continues to go through turmoil and there's something about the the mechanics of what we're doing that gives me satisfaction you know working with people and spiritual problems is it, it, you can't always see the fruit that's going on but I tell you what when I came to work and we, we make this happen and then there's a big you know they say what's the difference between the men and the boys it's the it's the size of their flamethrower so I would just 
I get satisfaction out of something that, that works. There's just men and machines and, 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 uh, and, and flame. But um, then I say to you, what we're doing in Ukraine is about, hopefully this year, mid-year, we, we, we've got a few things that need to go right still, research and development, but Ukraine is Europe's most corrupt country. I just want to add that spiritual element to you that um, you are engaged in a spiritual war where the same God that is saving lives and planning churches, where Christians are literally standing in the gap between warring factions, um, is the same God that wants to penetrate lives here, and it is a spiritual thing. So thank you for your support for us. Um, and just those last two slides now, uh, you can show where we're up to now. That was December 2017. We had our first Dutch engineering student. He spoke terrible English, and he was slightly dys dyslexic. <laughs> but he was just there excited uh, about engineering, and uh, we're seeing that, that um, it, it's a new day for us. And thank you for your continuing support for us, and um, please continue to pray uh, for Ukraine. Wayne and Olia are going back on Tuesday. So they're just as a, their last basic appointment before they go. They're, I think your sons are staying here, two of them, and that are staying here. So there's a bit of family separation. Let's pray for them right now. Father, we thank you for this gifted and sent couple, Lord God. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would continue to use them, O oh Lord. Father, let there be accelerated effectiveness, Father, upon their lives. We just pray, O oh God, let their family, O oh God, be safe here, O oh Lord, and work together over there, O oh God. And I pray, let the steps that need to happen with this machine, Father, happen, O oh God. Father, they can make a massive difference in that community, O oh Lord, and there are many communities right around the world. Father, we just pray, use them, O oh God. Bless them, O oh God. Let peace be upon them, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Wayne and Ollie have got a, a stand out of sight here and you'll be able to look at what they're doing. So that's pretty amazing, isn't it? When you talk about death shadow, that's death shadow right there, isn't it? So then the verse goes on and says, He will guide us in the way of peace. And I believe that's for us. It's a time of pruning. There's a measure of uncomfortability, which someone has let me know is not a word, but it has become one. And there shouldn't be a lack of peace. Our peace should actually be our plumb line. It's up to us to stay close to Jesus. It's not going to be a merged church or one of our pastors or our life group leaders that should sustain you. It should be your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's up to you to maintain and keep that strong. And if you do, he will guide you in the way of peace. There might be rocky times. There might be some fearful times. There might be some new and untried things that you need to do. You might have to go the extra mile, but you'll have peace. And it's only the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. But it's not going to be frantic. It's not going to be unreasonable. It's not going to be overwhelming. It's going to be God, and it's going to be God leading us in his ways of peace. It's a new wave, it's a new day, and God invites you to participate. Remember my word last year. You need to speculate, postulate, investigate, and meditate. Don't hesitate or procrastinate. 2018 is the year to participate. There's going to be places you can participate in the house. Right? You shouldn't. If you're part of a family... Just be served. If we have dinner at our house, someone's cleaning up, someone's cooking it, Nina, all right? Uh, someone is setting the table, someone's doing whatever, everyone has a role to make that happen. And I want to tell you, you should have a role at Emerge Church. On the seats, there's a thing and it's just got your next step. And it's got different ways in which you can participate uh, this year. Do it on the hub. Let the first thing you do be at Emerge Church Life and put your name down for something. We have Emerge Life running, and that helps you. Uh, just it's, it's, a, it's a program in all different ways, and I think there's a flyer for that on every seat. What's your next step? We have our Life Summit. This year I was able to confirm just yesterday that we have 
Bishop Frazier, all the way from Houston, with his wife, Mama, and she's a big mama, right? She, uh, uh, <laughs> right? We have Bishop Frazier and Mama coming to speak. I think we've got a slide there somewhere. Up there, it's going to come up there. And also Dave Dowry from Bridge Church in Melbourne. They're going to be incredible. The, uh, the dates are somewhere there. So make sure you take the Friday off now. Uh, I want the board and the staff to just start coming up. I'm trying to rush because there's a lot. We're going to finish soon. You've been there sitting for a while. Immersed Church God is taking us into our future. A new wave has begun. Do you perceive it? A new day is dawning because God loves us as a church. God loves Emerge Church. And I'm honoured to pastor the church with Nina. Come here, sweetheart. You know, tonight, Nina's going to preach part two. She's going to preach a fantastic word. I know what she's going to preach on. Please, if you don't you normally come to church on Sunday night, come and see part two of Vision Sunday. You know, I ask you, please participate. You already do. I, 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 am, I have no sense of dissatisfaction when it comes to our church. I don't see that the people are... I just love our church. I remember the very first Sunday when I stood up there and the congregation just looked. There was probably just 200 people, 250 people there. And I looked at the congregation and I go, Lord, I, I, don't, I don't love these people. I don't, I don't even know them. Who, who are they? I'm used to looking at the congregation that I love. And the person said to me that week, he said, well, of course you don't love the people that you know. If, you, if they're like that in six months, you've got an issue. But uh, I look seven years down the track, and I just love our church. And I thank God for allowing us to pastor. You know, I'm going to ask Pastor Ron Damon to come. You know, 60 years ago, come up, Ron. 60 years ago, Pastor Ron and uh, Pastor Fred and I think there's a picture up there somewhere. Has I got a picture up there? Right? A Pastor Fred who's also part of our church. Pastor Fred is doing what Pastor Fred does. And uh, he's actually visiting a 90-year-old pastor who doesn't get many friends. And it's something he arranged many a long time ago. So he couldn't be here this morning. But Pastor Ron and Pastor Fred started ministry 60 years ago today. That's amazing, isn't it? And in that picture... There are many world changes. And so I want you all to stand. And uh, Pastor John, you're not going to come up? You still, it's not March 11th. Get up here. Get up here. What are you doing? One of the things I want to say about Jonathan, he has worked as hard on his last days as he worked on his first days. There's no kind of like, put my legs up and I'll just wait to Adelaide. He's working hard. And you're still part of us till the 11th. All right. So church, I'm going to, let Pastor Ron just pray for us because we want to lead you, but we want to serve you. And we want to see God take us into our next steps and to where God has had. We want to catch the wave that God has sent us. So, Amen. Praise God. Let's all put your hands out towards them. Father, in Jesus' name, it's a new day. This is the beginning of a new day. The light is shone upon us. And this day, we see the beginning of a new thing, a better thing, a greater thing, a wiser thing. And Lord, we believe that in the days to come, you are going to pour your spirit out upon us in such a mighty way. We won't know what to do with it. Amen. Amen. Father, speak into the hearts of each one, particularly Pastor Mark. As you speak into his heart, Lord, give his understanding of what you are saying. And with that understanding, put wisdom in how to do it. That he will do it the way you want it done. Thank you, Lord, for the understanding that you will give each member of the staff, Lord, as they do their bit. Lord, help them to do it as unto the Lord. Lord, help them to see it as part of the purpose of this church. Help them by your grace 
Lord, to keep moving forward. I pray, Lord, for a special measure of grace over every one of these people. In Jesus' name. Bring your spirit down upon them, Father, in a special way. The spirit that lives within them will respond to the anointing of the spirit that comes upon them in a new way, a new light, a new heart, a new spirit, new understanding, new grace, new goodness, new peace. All of these things, Father, upon these people this day. Father, I pray for this congregation. Spirit of God, fall upon them in Jesus' name. Come upon them. Fill their hearts with your love, your grace, your goodness, your authority and power that they might go out and tell other people about Jesus. That we will fill the church and have to build another one. Amen. Amen. Bless your people. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You can take your seats. This is like the world's longest meeting, right? And we, we finish soon, right? I promise. We'll just get straight into tonight's meeting, right? But no, we won't do that. But uh, I, uh, I, I think it's good that there's just a lot of vision, a lot of things that are happening. I do want to finish it. Maybe the band could come. I'm going to finish. I want to finish with that song, Prophesy. It's a new song. Many of you may not know it, but I just love the words. It's basically declaring over yourself what you want to see God do in your life, that you're not going to be held back by limitations and that you're going to allow God to do what it is. You're going to speak life. You're going to speak over your circumstance. But before we do, I actually want to receive a vision offering. And uh, on every chair, there is an envelope. So if you want to give via credit card, you can do that. Now, I don't want to just take up another offering, but I want to give you the opportunity to specifically sow into the vision. Now, you do every week, but this is a specific vision offering, saying I'm behind the vision. I, I want to participate in the vision. You know, I, it, it's, it, it's free will. You don't want to, that's fine. But I want to give you that opportunity to have that free will offering, to be part of the vision. You know, it's something that I I just look at it as an opportunity. That, that's, that's how I look at it. To, to kind of like the, the same blessing. It's like when we said, you know, the other day, we looked at the Word and we saw that when you give money towards a traveling teacher, you have kind of like partnership with what they are, you know, what they're doing. And it's like in this vision offering, it's like you get a partnership in what God is building. See, in the 50s, God started Emerged Church when he started Redcliffe AOG. And then as gone and happened, and 60s, God was moving, 70s, God was moving, 80s, God's moving, 90s, God starts Albany Hills Christian Church. And then in 2017, we become legally a merged church. God's been doing something. And when God has a generational church, He's got something else. We were once this, we are going to be that. We're starting now from a fresh base, with fresh talent, with freshness, because it's a new day. And so I'd say, in your offering, you're partnering with something that God started a long time ago, but He's got a great vision for. It's not done and finished. So team, Tonight, make sure you're at uh, Vision uh, Sunday Part 2. Nina's got a great word. It's going to be fun. You're going to see some stuff because Nina's really an actress, not a preacher. So uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be really excellent. Come on, let's give. Let's finish with that song, Prophesy. I know kind of, you're supposed to do a soft kind of song, but I want to do a pumpy song. Once you're given, stand up. Why don't you dance? Raise your hands. Get in. God bless you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Every chain and the fear that held me And I refuse to agree 
with the lies they told me I take up my position speak to all my conditions take the authority you are for me the word of the Lord in my mouth to bring about the change full of your power I step out Declare aloud your praise, I'll prophesy.